for. Okay, so welcome to the Low Line Racing Podcast. And today we are being joined by Amani Williams. And so let's get right into this. Um, what? How old were you when you started racing? Yeah, so I started racing when I was uh, eight years old. You know, I began racing in like the go kart division in uh, Jackson, Michigan, which is like state where I'm from. Um, and then I moved up to, you know, these Bandolero type cars called uh, Mini Cups and had great success in those uh, winning 18 races and two championships along the way. And then uh, after that, like I decided to make a jump to the Arca Truck Pro Series, you know, which was a series I would race around in the Midwest in Michigan, Ohio and Indiana. Uh, unfortunately, it's not around anymore, but it was a uh, it was kind of like a great stepping stone to get into to help me get up to NASCAR. Pretty much like those um that same year I was invited to one of NASCAR's uh drive for diversity programs, you know, and um, you know, um uh, with this team called uh, Ref Racing, which was like a arcade team at the time. Um and even though I didn't get chosen to drive for their team, you know, it it, it was like there was a kind of recognition that I needed because the NASCAR I, I believe saw the potential in me of what I could do for the sport. And so they decided to let me join up in NASCAR, but uh, they wanted me to start out in a series up in Canada, which I didn't really know at the time, but NASCAR has a uh, series in Canada called the NASCAR Penty series. And that's kind of where I got my start in NASCAR racing against the likes of DJ Kennington and, you know, Alex Hecliani, some guys that have, you know, race NASCAR before, you know, Tagliani was a former Indy 500 pole center. So you, you talk about competition that I was getting into, you know, it, uh, that's, uh, it was big time, you know, and um, it, it really helped me learn a lot. It just like how, like the best of the best do it, no matter where they are in the world, you know, the things you do to prepare yourself off the track and on the track during race days. And so I took everything I learned after running like I think six or seven races in that series came back to the United States still racing in NASCAR um racing in the ARCA East ARCA West series races and then now and then I made a couple starts in ARCA racing at Phoenix and Michigan you know another hometown track of mine and then um was racing uh more recently in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series uh starting from 2021 you know and uh right now I'm uh I'm excited to say, you know, like given uh, what you have in your background, that like I'll be make, making my return to the Arkham Menard series, uh, running the Daytona race in about a couple of weeks. So I'm I'm very excited for it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what what led you to get getting into NASCAR, say, versus, say, open wheel racing or like going that route? Um, well, you know, to me, like it, it all started when I was a very young kid, you know, right around like three, four years old, I, I always had a love for cars, you know, like I would, uh, get a, a bunch of matchbox and hot wheel cars and just play with them at my house, whether I was at my parents or whether I was at my grandparents. Um, and, and I remember this, uh, Christmas gift that I got, it, it was a die cast car of a, uh, Kurt Busch number 97 car, like back then when he drove for uh, Roush Racing, you know, and uh, from there on, you know, that's when I started to learn like, hey, th this is a NASCAR car. And like, wait, NASCAR? That sounds very cool, you know, and so I wanted to check it out. And so um, after watching uh, my first NASCAR race on TV, you know, I, I was hooked. But from there on, I wanted to watch every NASCAR race I was on every Sunday, you know, it's just how fast those cars were going 180 100 mile, 90 miles per hour i've never seen anything like it you know and just how aggressive the drivers were uh, like how cool the paint schemes were and you know so really it, it came to a point where you know it was like sort of falling in love in cars to fall in love with racing and then kind of more towards you know hey this is something that i wanted to do in life i wanted to be a professional race car driver you know, and so but really that's kind of where it all started for me. I didn't really focus too much on any car like or like the open wheel stuff. I mean, obviously you, you see how they go about races, especially on the ovals. Like 
you know, it's just uh, not something that like I wanted to start off with. But, you know, hey, you know, if a opportunity goes down the road to maybe uh, drive an open rule race, especially with like, you know, when they do the uh, Bell Isle or like even uh, last year, the downtown streets of they uh, Detroit. You know, I wouldn't mind taking crack of it just to see what it was like. Yeah. Um, what was your, what was it like the first time you got into the Craftsman Truck Series, like the nerves and everything? Uh, can you just talk a bit about that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, the Truck Series, it's one of NASCAR's top three series. And, you know, like to me, like, I sort of felt like, you know, hey, I'm here, you know, like uh, this is the big time. Yeah, this is like top three series in America, you know, and I'm a part of it. You know, now it's time to show show the world uh, what I can do behind the wheel of a truck, you know. And um, I would say, like, in terms of what was going to happen during that race, you know, it's just there weren't really much nerves. I mean, like the, the main thing for me was just given that it was my first race was just to finish all the laps. Just get that valuable seat time, get all the experience of running a full race because it'll, it'll help me down the road, you know. And so that was really my main focus. And like, quite honestly, you know, even uh, going to a Craftsman truck, like it was kind of a little easier transition because I've raced in the Arca truck series before. So it's like I had a good understanding of like what type of vehicle I was going to get into, you know, like the the way it was going to maneuver around like the way I was going to drive it you know it just I sort of adapt, adapted to it uh pretty quickly you know so like really it was more excitement than there was uh, nerves going into <laughs> my first truck race in NASCAR. Now I believe in one of your or in a few of your races you've been sponsored by um uh what was, what was the, uh oh my god sorry Blue <laughs> Sprick. uh the uh drive for autism or something what, is that it i think it's uh, drive for autism truck i think yeah you mean like uh blue sprig right yeah 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 so like i've been sponsored by uh blue sprig for like a few races it's a, a amazing company like really you know blue sprig is a company that's close to my heart to, in terms of the fact that like they deal with, you know, individuals, families, and children who are impacted by autism. And I just happen to be one who who was diagnosed on, with autism when I was two years old, you know. So the fact that we were able to, you know, connect uh, and have them support my racing and everything is it, it, just, uh, just great. You know, I, I, I'm really thankful for Blue Spirit for, you know, like for what they do with autism and what they do for racing. You know, I just, they're all about trying to, you know, work with families who have children on the spectrum to kind of, you know, work with them so that they can be able to accomplish big things in life. You know, it's just, you know, there's always this misconception with autism, you know, like, yeah, it's it's a diagnosis that may be like very different to ev everyone, but that doesn't mean that we can, you know, share this world together and make a difference and you know, what we want to accomplish, what we want to succeed in. And, you know, like, uh, especially for this ARCA race coming up in Daytona in a couple of weeks, you know, th this could have not been a very great spot to have a uh, blue sprick on a car because, you know, um, they have a large presence in the state of Florida with 41 centers under the name of Florida Autism Center, you know, and so like, r really, we, we thought this was uh, a great spot uh, being at, at Daytona of, of all racetracks in the world to have them sponsor me uh, for that race so you know we're just uh very excited to you know have uh blue sprick uh, um be with us you know it's a uh, such a great company that's just you know close and dear in my heart okay and uh did do you have a favorite driver you look up to that you like or like that's the guy like i'm gonna root for each week yeah, like, so when I was a kid growing up, like, I, I was always a big Jimmy Johnson fan, you know, back then when he had the 48 lows and, like, he was winning a bunch yeah. of races, winning a bunch of championships. That's always, that was always, like, my guy that I would root for every Sunday, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that, like, 
he may not be racing full time anymore, but like at least like he's out there racing several races. So it's not like, you know, I'll <laughs> I'll never see Jimmy Johnson on the track again. I'll be able to see him, you know, race and all. But um, uh, you know, more lately I've kind of looked more more looked up to, you know, drivers who kind of like me. You know, I may have autism, but I'm also African American. So like I always uh look out for guys like Bubba Wallace, who's, you know, in the Cup series, you know, like, you know, like showing that, hey, it's possible for people like us to get to the very top of the sport, you know, and I always think of uh, guys like uh, Bill Lester back in the day, you know, he was racing in NASCAR and then even um, Wendell Scott, who happened to be the first African-American driver to win a NASCAR race. So, you know, I always uh, looked looked up to and root for drivers like that because like I know it's uh, it's possible in this sport. Uh, do you have a favorite track out of like maybe a local track near you or like a track you race in NASCAR or that that's a great question because <laughs> I've been racing on a lot of tracks but um I will say uh that time when I uh, ran the Arca race in Michigan like racing on that Michigan track that a wide two mile track like that was a, a lot of fun to race I mean it's just like the way that track is built, you know, it's so wide, you can pretty much go anywhere on the racetrack, low, high, or in the middle. And, and the bonus that you're going like close to 200 miles per hour, sometimes over a little over 200 miles an hour, just the speed and just the feeling that you can just move around all over the racetrack. You know, I, I just thought that was a fun track to race on. It's one probably my favorite track that I've ever raced on by far, you know, and Right now, like I haven't raced on all the NASCAR tracks, but you know, hopefully, I'll be able to check uh, check all of them. You know, yeah. And uh, do you have a, a specific goal you want to accomplish for the year, other than like other than say maybe a win or whatever? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, uh, the easiest the easiest thing for for me to say it's like you know as a driver you know you always want to go out there and try to win but like honestly you know the way my uh, situation is you know i think the goal really is just to you know just uh be competitive in every race that i i compete on and just you know like try to finish uh, all the races you know just complete every lap get that valuable seat time and that experience you know, just keep building on that because like uh, eventually it's going to pay off in the long run. You know, now I've been racing in NASCAR for a while, but just, you know, finishing races are 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 are, are really important, you know, especially in your development, especially in mine. And, um, you know, like uh, for me, it's just we just try to I just try to go out there in every race and just be competitive and, you know, just, uh, you know, do the best I can. Like that's pretty much the goal. And do you have any advice for other, like, say, up and coming kids looking up to you? Uh, yeah, you know, like I think uh, I, uh, the most important thing I would always tell them is like, it, it, for a sport like this, you want to make sure your kid is racing as early as possible. You know, because it's like the, the earlier you race, like the better opportunities. Or, or the more chances you'll get opportunities down the road. So it's like, if you can start as soon as you possibly can, you know, then you might have a shot, you know, and then along the way, you know, like you want to kind of get your kid into, you know, like, so kind of think of it like levels, right? You know, you got level one to like level five or level 10 or something like that. And so for each car, you want to kind of start your kid out with like the smaller, maybe not so fast cars and just start kind of, work work their way up you know to where you know they can be able to adapt they'll be able to handle with like the weight of the car the speed of the car and then you know be just the main thing is to be able to contact and network as many people as you possibly can to try and help you move up the ladder you know and get to where you want to go you know because like in a sport like this you can't do it all by yourself you know and like it takes like a lot of support a lot of people you know riding with you to help you achieve your dream and so like those would be the things that i would tell you know any parent who has a kid that's wanting to race you know it's just th those three things if you can do those three things then that you'll be able to make it
thank you for joining the show. And uh, you can catch Amani Williams at the Daytona uh, Arca Race uh, next, uh, no, not next Saturday, uh, Saturday the 17th. And, uh, and he will be driving the number 13 for our MBM Motorsports.